going on in the COVID world, but really a, a focus on companies that have come out on top. And one of those is Abbott. And joining me now to talk about all of that and more is new president and CEO, Robert Ford. Robert, thank you so much for joining us today. For having me, Angela. It's good to be here. Great. Well, I know that we've got some big news here, Abbott. You specifically are keynoting at CES, one of the biggest technology conferences in the country. And it's really exciting news. So tell me a little bit about that. What's going on there and, and why is it a big deal? Well, we're, I'm really excited. Abbott's very excited uh, to be able to deliver uh, the keynote at the CES 2022, especially since it'll be a live event this year. And um, it's really important because we're the first healthcare company ever to deliver that keynote address. And I think it's very appropriate. I think it's very timely uh, that a healthcare company uh, does deliver that keynote, uh, obviously, for two reasons. One, uh, we've been through this incredible uh, experience with the COVID and the pandemic and the importance of health is, is front and center for sure. But I also think it's important because uh, of this convergence we're seeing between health tech technology and digital technology coming together. Uh, that's a clear trend that's been occurring for the last uh, at least five, six years that we've been seeing. So I think it's very timely and appropriate uh, for us to be able to be part of this. Absolutely. And that, of course, has come front and center really in the middle of the pandemic. So I want to ask you about that. Let's start with that first, which is you taking the helm of Abbott in the middle of the pandemic, you know, we knew that you were going to be taking over well before, but the, the pandemic just sort of came in the middle. What was that like? What were some of the things that you sort of had conscious moments of that you couldn't believe were happening? Well, I'd say, first of all, there was no playbook for this. Uh, so I think uh, not only new CEOs like myself, but even very experienced CEOs, we were all kind of uh, really having to make decisions uh, with a, a new set of experiences and learning uh, a lot of, as we made those decisions. But I would say for me, specifically for Abbott, uh, I took over a company that was in really great shape. Uh, we had a tremendous organic growth. We had a very rich pipeline, uh, a lot of health technology uh, that we were developing. So I, I took over a, you know, a company that was in really great shape. Uh, I think another key aspect of that is uh, mission and purpose. Uh, and that's so important today for well, for me and obviously for all the uh, Abbott employees. And to be at a healthcare company during a pandemic, it's almost like, OK, this is when your, your number is really being called. Uh, this is for moments that Abbott was built for. So I think that was very powerful for all of us to reconnect to our mission and our purpose. And uh, I have a great team. Uh, we have a, a, a great, uh, passionate uh, group of employees and, and a team uh, that's dedicated and committed. So, so while there wasn't any playbook, if you put all those kind of components together, it, it definitely made navigating a little bit easier. But there were definitely some challenges for sure. I, I can imagine. I wonder, you know, of course, being in the pandemic led to a lot of really interesting sort of changes in consumer behavior, one of those specifically being uh, health tech. And I know that's something that really is a big part of the company, but let's focus on the, the product itself that really uh, gave the attention to Abbott, and that's the Binax Now Rapid Test, started off really helping support government efforts. And now, they're on the shelves, they're accessible to everyone. And this is coming at a time where, you know, we've seen this pivot from consumerism and at-home tests, which were sort of a niche market before. Do you feel like this is an area that Abbott can really ca capitalize on? Well, for sure. I, I think, um, you know, we've we've long believed uh, in the, uh, the trend to uh, decentralize uh, some of the testing. Um, it's not an either or, it's an and. Uh, so a lot of testing historically has been done in hospitals and labs. And what we see now with COVID is this trend to be able to add on uh, a different type of testing, one that's a little bit more decentralized, uh, that consumers can, you know, go to a pharmacy or they can go to a, a physician's office and airports and hotels, right? So there's this complete decentralization of I think is very uh, positive for the entire diagnostic business. Uh, we also talk about the digitization of it, right? And, and we've seen a lot of that activity of medical devices with digital. And, and what you saw in COVID was Abbott's understanding of the importance of that digitization. So not only do we develop the Binax test, but we also developed a companion app called Navica that connects the test 
with your phone so that you can have your, um, you know, your, your green pass to say, hey, I've tested and, I'm, and I've been tested negative. So I think that's an important aspect of it. And then the third piece I would say, Julie, is this, this aspect of democratization. And it's a word that gets thrown out there, but we really truly believe in that. So when we launched Binext, uh, if you remember, a lot of the rapid tests were costing $100, $150 to get a test. Uh, and we went out and we launched it at $5 uh, to really make it accessible uh, and be able to build scale. So I think those three aspects, digitize, democratize, and decentralize, uh, not only did you see that with COVID, but ultimately that's our vision. That's our view of how healthcare technology and digital technology will be able to come together. I'm so glad you brought up the pricing because we did see that. We saw that shift from it was $5 when the government was sort of mass purchasing it. Um, and now when it's on the shelves, it's 25. I wonder, how do you think about that pricing, especially now in an environment where pricing is such an important topic when we're talking about democratization of healthcare? T talk to me, walk me through that, the thought process behind that price increase and what you think about future tests and how they should be priced. Well, the price increase from the five dollars to twenty four that that is actually driven by an increase in our cost. When we talk about selling the test for five dollars, you know we're selling boxes of uh, you know a forty tests together. So once you put it on the retail shelf uh, and you're only putting two tests together, then you're adding cost to that process. Um, so there was only a slight increase from our cost. And then you've got the retailers who obviously have their cost to be able to distribute and, and stock the product and, and, and they have then uh, you know, their, their markup too. So I, I believe that we'll continue to see uh, improvement in costs and in prices uh, and it'll become more and more and more accessible as we go forward. Talk to me about the the shipping and the the production of it. I know that there's been a lot of a focus on the supply chain right now and the constraints there globally. Have you been affected by that? And how do you see that impacting you as we move forward with more demand on testing? Well, listen, as, as a global healthcare company uh, with global operations and global supply chains, there's no doubt uh, in terms of what we're seeing around the world today, uh, you know, as this it, big impact that COVID is having on global supply chains. That, that's a reality. Specifically for Binex, though, is when we built our manufacturing and our supply chains, we built it all here in the U.S. So the two manufacturing sites that we set up were, were built here in the U.S. And the majority of our suppliers are all U.S. based. So we're not seeing that crunch uh, on supply chain when it comes to, to the Binex test. Okay. Going back to consumerism, give me a little bit of an outlook now looking forward because we see this trend happening, we see consumers picking up on it. What does that look like for Abbott? Obviously, you're looking at internally producing some of these tests, but is there room for M&As maybe? Are you looking at deals or is it mostly just internal? Well, I, I truly believe that um, you know our strategy of investing in our internal R&D uh, to drive innovation organically uh, is a great strategy. It, it puts us really close to our customers. Uh, it shows that we can understand their needs and anticipate their needs going forward. So a lot of our focus right now has been building our internal pipeline. And we have just a great pipeline across our diagnostic business, across our medical device businesses, even across our nutrition business. We have a steady cadence of, uh, uh, of, of new innovations. And you know, if there's if there's anything that uh, makes sense strategically for us uh, to uh, to look at uh, for an acquisition, and if it makes sense uh, strategically, and if it uh, uh, creates value for our shareholders, sure, we'll look at that. Um, but uh, you know, it's really this combination of looking at organically, and um, and if there's an opportunity uh, that comes along, that that you know, we, we've shown that we know how to kind of acquire and, and integrate. So in a nutshell, the door is always open. That's good to know. <laughs> Wish you had time for more, but we'll leave it there for now. CEO and president of Abbott Laboratories, Robert Ford, thank you again for joining us today and all the best. Thank you for having me.